Sponsored by Incogni. Last month, Eric Michigowski revealed to the world that Pebble, the first truly successful smartwatch, was poised for a comeback nearly a decade after its demise. That timing makes sense. The smartwatch world has settled into a rough echo of the smartphone landscape, plateaued to predictability as the once polarizing gadgets have found a home on nearly half a billion wrists worldwide. But what about those times where even looking at your wrists is inconvenient? What new frontiers could we explore if we had a display in front of our eyes at all times? I know, half of you just got the urge to rage quit this video, but hang on. These aren't meta Ray-Bans with a camera pointing outward at all times, nor do they isolate you from the real world like the vaguely alien X-Real glasses. In fact, the G1 smart glasses from Even Realities are a much simpler idea. They're basically a smartwatch for your face, and they're a better version of that than anything I've worn yet. Even Realities had no input into this review and didn't pay me anything to produce it, but the company did let me spend the past six weeks with the G1 review sample, which means I was wearing them at CES when I learned all about the display technology that makes them work. But before we get to the how, let me first show you my first reaction to a floating heads-up display. Oh, <laughs> I did not expect the display to come on right away. You can't see this, but I can. It's right there. It's right between you and me. It's a little, it's like war games. It's a little green line of text. Welcome. Even G1 is connected. Do I look weird when I'm reading it? Do my eyes cross? Do I look, do I look like I'm not paying attention to you anymore? Follow the instructions on your phone. Probably. It's incredibly difficult to capture the output on camera, but if you remember the text from war games, or, or really any computer displays from the early 1980s, just imagine a similar ghostly green readout. 25 degrees wide, hovering a few feet in front of your face. Now, it's not always there. In fact, when you're going about your day, you don't see anything. But tilt your head up toward the sky, and that digital dashboard materializes in all its viridescent glory. What's on that display is everything a basic smartwatch face would show you. You've got the date and time, weather conditions, your next calendar appointment, how many notifications are waiting, and a widget for either news headlines, stock prices, or quick notes to self. If you prefer, notifications can be set to just appear in front of you as they come in, with no head tilt required. All that data is coming from your iPhone or Android, to which the G1 connects via Bluetooth. There are also dual microphones, so you can record voice memos, which can be transcribed and summarized later, or get a visual translation of someone who's speaking to you in a different language. Or, yes, you can invoke the fickle genie of AI and see answers of varying value from Perplexity or ChatGPT. Those memos and queries can also be accessed through the Even app, which is surprisingly mature six months after release. Also a surprise to me, that this product is even a reality in the first place. See, my last extended experience with smart glasses was with Focals by North, which for all their achievements were also heavy and bulky, with a very finicky display. By contrast, the magnesium and titanium G1s are lightweight and low profile, hiding the bulk of their technology in small pods that sit behind the ears. And up front, the surface relief gradients that make the display work are only visible from certain angles. Instead of looking like smart glasses, you know, capital S, capital G, mostly the G1s just made me look smarter. Or, I don't know, maybe older? Jury's out on that. Point is, when you consider how criminally dumb most other smart glasses look, these classic Pantos are an incredible design achievement. The technology is pretty straightforward. A micro LED projector sits within each end piece and transmits light via a waveguide to the diffraction gratings built into each lens. KG on Tech points out that they're smaller than the total possible resolution of the projectors. It seems even realities wanted to cut down on all the artifacts and visual distortions of other smart glasses. And I gotta say, it's mostly worked. Once again, I have to give credit to Carl Gutag for his in-depth analysis of these and many other smart glasses, which taught me a lot about how products like this work. If you're curious about smart glasses and want to do some in-depth reading, I will link his blog in the description. 
If you're wondering how much battery all this Bluetooth and thousand nit brightness burns, actually not much. On my busiest days, I barely use half the glass's 160 milliamp hour power supply, and the carrying case contains an extra 2000 milliamp hour reserve for wireless top ups on the go. Now, while I find most of the G1's utility in the pop-up notifications, even Reality's also cleverly included a teleprompter feature. You just paste your script into the app and set it to scroll, either manually or at set speeds, or let the glasses listen to you and advance the script at your speaking pace. It works very well, and I actually used it not just to record this segment, but also in the intro to my last video on the Galaxy S25 Ultra. Did you notice? But for all these wins, I can't help but feel the G1s are endangered by the same convergence effect that laid waste to so many companies in the wake of the smartphone's debut. I'll explain after this. It happens so often, it's barely news anymore. A big company gets hacked and a bunch of your personal data leaks all over the web. Data breaches like this rose 72% in 2023 compared to the previous year. And while there's not much you can do to prevent those, you can fight back in another way, by purging your private data before it's stolen. This video is sponsored by Incogni, a service that does that work for you. Instead of you reaching out to data brokers one by one, Incogni does it automatically on your behalf, removing your data, handling objections from their side, and making sure your data stays off the market by taking it down if it pops up again. And with the family and friends plan, you can add up to four members to your subscription, so they benefit from the same exact service you do. Take back your personal data with Incogni. Use the code on your screen at the link below and get 60% off an annual plan. Thanks to Incogni for sponsoring this video. The trouble with smart glasses is the same trouble facing so much of the world these days, meta. The same people who brought you Facebook collaborated with Ray-Ban to kick out the best smart glasses, well, ever, in my opinion. The camera's capable, the headphones are handy, the calls are clearer than on any earbuds I've worn, and the even Realities G1 can't do any of that. So if the rumors are true about Meta planning to add a display of some sort to the next generation of Meta Ray-Bans, well, I know which ones I'll be shopping for. But Michael, you're maybe saying, I don't want a camera on my glasses or Meta anywhere near my body. And fair enough. These are different products for different use cases. So let's talk about where the G1s specifically fall down. First. You might have noticed I didn't talk about navigation before, and that's because it's awful. Searching for points of interest doesn't work for me, even in New York City, so I needed to enter exact addresses. And neither the heads-up display nor the audio prompts from your phone give you street names when telling you where to turn. I won't belabor the point, it's just bad. Mapbox is apparently the geodata provider here, so I hope even Realities moves to Google Maps or something, because this could be a really great use case if it worked. Also, there are smaller rough spots. Ride in an Uber with one of those drivers who's all brake or all gas, and you'll get the HUD popping up when you don't need it, as the gyro misreads acceleration as you tilting your head. And all the data displayed is one way. You can't actually read any of the news headlines you see, nor can you reply to messages. And on my review sample, there's a faint coil whine coming from the right ear pod anytime the display is on. Then there's the sunglass solution. Honestly, I really like the look of the clip-on shades. It's a simple, timeless method to turn ordinary glasses into sunnies, but they're a whole extra thing to carry, which means someone like me can easily lose them. And that's exactly what I did at some point. Even if you're less forgetful, we live in a time where controllable opacity lenses are a reality. And I think glasses this high-tech deserve a similarly high-tech dimming solution. Of course, that would have driven the price even higher, which is going to be the real tough sell for most folks. $599 is the least you'll pay for the G1s, with corrective lenses adding $150 and the shades another hundo. 
with the Ray-Bans around half that price, and the similar Halliday smart glasses coming in under 500 bucks, you've got to be really sure you want the G1. And confident even realities can last for the long haul to splash the cash. And there's no getting around it. Smartwatches already do most of this stuff. But to bring it full circle, I like this product because it reminds me of that first Pebble smartwatch. It's intentional and focused, and despite the fact that it packs some very advanced technology, it barely looks like technology at all. While bigger fish, like Samsung and Apple, may eventually soak up the majority of the market share in this new segment, for right now, for what it is, the Even Realities G1 is better than it has any right to be. This video was produced following six weeks with the G1 review sample provided by Even Realities. And my thanks to Joshua Vergara for the introduction. Check him and his review out on the tube at JV Tech T. As always, the manufacturer had no copy approval rights or editorial input into this content, not even an early preview. Even Realities is seeing this for the first time right along with you. And finally, I take a sizable hit on view counts for not adding a dumb surprised face or baity headline to my videos, so please share this one if you'd like to see more like it on YouTube. Until next time, from Michael Fisher, Captain Two Phones on all the socials, thanks for watching. And stay mobile, my friends.